A few months ago, I was invited on episode 99 of Up For Discussion, a podcast led by my friend Thomas Alatnai. I've put a link to that episode in this video's description. Have a listen to it if you want to find out my thoughts on the future of humanity and Nicki Minaj. Anyway, Tom and I have been following one another on Twitter for quite some time now, and one of his more recent tweets got my attention because of a typo it contained. But the typo just caught my attention. What was more interesting was the rest of the tweet. At first I thought of Annie the Orphan from the Broadway musical, but then I realized he was making a reference to the song Smooth Criminal by Michael Jackson, where he goes, The name Annie is repeated many, many times, more than 45 times, and even that number can grow larger, whether or not you consider echoes and delayed responses as separate instances. Was Annie someone important in Michael Jackson's life? Well, get this. On January 18th, 2017, the American talk show Dr. Phil featured a woman named Annie, and she claimed to be the real person on whom the character in the song is based. She thinks she'll get a lot of money by claiming rights to the song, even though copyright law in the United States only recognizes the authors of a work as the ones entitled to any money it generates. In this case, she would be considered at most as a source of inspiration, but not a co-author. The song Smooth Criminal is about an attacker who creeps into a woman's apartment and presumably gets her killed. It's not explicitly said that she dies, but we kinda get the picture with lyrics like bloodstains on the carpet, it was her doom, and to top it all off, according to Michael Jackson's brother Jermaine Jackson, the storyline was inspired by serial killer Richard Ramirez, aka The Night Stalker. On September 20th, 1989, he was convicted of 13 murders, he was given the capital punishment, but on June 7th, 2013, it was complications from lymphoma that were the cause of his death. Life, or the kiss of life, is another name for CPR, or cardiopulmonary resuscitation. It's a sequence of actions that someone follows in order to increase chances of survival of a victim who suffers cardiac arrest. In the 1950s, it's doctors James Elam and Peter Safar who developed the first version of CPR. They devised a step-by-step -step procedure called ABC, which stood for airway, breathing, and circulation. But the problem wasn't to teach people in theory how to do CPR, but rather to give them hands-on experience. The trainees could only practice on one another, which made things a little bit uncomfortable, especially when it came to the whole mouth-to-mouth -mouth part. So the solution was to create a plastic doll on which they could practice. Enter Osmund Lerdal, the soft plastic genius of Norway. He rose to the task of creating a mannequin that was anatomically correct, robust, and that was relatively inexpensive to produce. The face he gave the mannequin was that of the then-famous Inconnu de la Seine. Sometime in the 1880s, the body of a young woman was washed ashore in Paris by the riverbanks of the Seine. She had presumably committed suicide by throwing herself in the river, since no signs of violence were found on her body upon forensic analysis. To this day, her identity remains a mystery, but that hasn't kept her from becoming famous. To the contrary, a death mask was made, and replicas of her face were sold all over Europe. That's how Lerdel got to know her. So by giving his mannequin the face of a drowning victim, he was turning the tables on death by offering a chance of saving so many other lives. This isn't the Seine, I'm actually not in France, it's the Rivière des Prairies in Montreal. And what about the name Annie? Well, in the 1940s, Lairdal had created a best-selling plastic doll called Anne. As it happens, that was the most common given name to baby girls in Norway between 1940 and 1971. The resuscitation doll was given the name Annie as a homage to that very successful toy doll. Before even starting the ABC of the CPR, the first step is to tap on the victim's shoulder and yell, Are you okay? And according to Matt Forger, the sound engineer who worked on the album Bad with Michael Jackson, he must have heard the line, Annie, are you okay, word for word during a CPR training program he was following. So, is Annie okay? No, she's not. She's dead. And you know what else sucks? Michael Jackson died at the hands of his personal physician who didn't know how to perform CPR. He was convicted of involuntary manslaughter in 2011. Maybe he should have listened a little more carefully to Michael Jackson when he sang ABC. Cause learning CPR isn't hard, it's actually easy as one, two, three. Cheers to that.